forum. Seeing none, uh, we will move then to general business and the agenda item number nine, presentation of the preliminary uh, audit financial statements that we look forward to every year. <laughs> yes. so it's going to be a movie. <laughs> That's better. Yeah. That's better. Yeah. It's animated, maybe, yeah. some year. Popcorn and beans. That's so hard. All right. Um, well, my name is Michael Beza with Berg and KDB. I was the manager on your audit this year, so I oversaw field work and did um, reviewed all of my staff's work papers. Um, first of all, thank you for inviting me to present the results of our audit. Uh, Paula and her staff do a great job every year of getting everything ready for us. They have all the journal entries in and everything pr prepared for us when we come out, so we really appreciate that. Um, as you mentioned, these are, this is a preliminary financial or preliminary report to you. Um, if you recall, last year um, in fiscal 15, you had to implement GASB 68, which is related to, to pensions and the new pension standards that came out. And so. With that, you have to use pension information from PERA dated as of June 30th of 2016. However, that information doesn't come out until around February. So we wanted to keep um, on schedule as far as issuing the financial statements, um, at least preliminary financial statements to get you the information as you get ready for next year. And then also, it's only the government-wide numbers, so your long-term numbers that are gonna change your actual general fund the general fund itself is not going to change from uh, what I present or from what's in the f uh, preliminary financial statements that you receive. So just wanted to, to uh, <coughs> remind you of that as far as why we are issuing, why we're talking about preliminary financial statements right now. So there are different components of the audit, um, a few different components. The first one is the independent auditor's report. This here is basically the main purpose of the audit is um, for us to provide an opinion on the financial statements. So the auditor's report itself talks about management and that management is responsible for the financial statements. The auditor is responsible to express an opinion on the financial statements and we have done that and we've given you an unmodified opinion uh, which, is a clean, which is a clean opinion and is the best opinion that we are able to give you. Uh, also, as part of the audit, we have to do um, our audit in accordance with government auditing standards. So we have to do some compliance testing on laws and regulations, contracts, grant agreements, that type of thing. And, and um, within that report, there were no compliance issues that we noted. Um, there were no material weaknesses, but two significant deficiencies. We'll talk about those in a little bit. A third uh, set component to our audit is related to federal federal dollars. Um, so we have to do a report in accordance with the uniform guidance. So this is um, the federal single audit. If you have more than $750,000 in total federal expenditures, we have to do um, a special audit on those federal expenditures. So we did do that this year. This year you were just under $1 million in total federal expenditures. And we have issued an unmodified opinion on compliance on the federal uh, programs as well. So a clean opinion on the federal side. And then finally, uh, we also have to look at several Minnesota state statutes um, that the Office of the State Auditor uh, puts out every year. They put out some manuals that they want us to specifically um, on statutes that they specifically want us to look at. And we did have two findings on that uh, related to legal, legal compliance this year, and we'll take a look at those in just a minute. And then finally, we have within the communications letter uh, just some financial analysis and, and required communication um, that is in there and that required communication if you get a chance just to read through it it's basically just general information that we are required to put in writing to the governing governing bodies of the entities that we audit so if you get a chance if you could read through that at some point the significant deficiencies I mentioned earlier are the uh, comments the findings that you're used to receiving the lack of segregation of accounting duties and then the preparation of financial statements so nothing too concerning here um, from my perspective, just something to remain aware of and um, it's always a good idea just to look at your internal controls, especially if there's um, any changes in your activity, if you get a new revenue source, if you have new, new projects going on or anything like that, um, or employee turnover, it's a good time to look at, at internal controls. But again, it's nothing that I'm real concerned about, something to keep in mind and always um, um, be cognizant that uh, you do have a small staff, so there is, uh, there are some controls or some areas where 
one person is doing multiple parts of the process. And then the legal compliance findings are both related to uh, the hoist project this year. If you have a project that's over $100,000, you have to obtain a sufficient performance of payment bonds for those contracts, and there wasn't one for that particular project this year. And then also there's required responsible contract verbiage that uh, Minnesota state statutes require. Uh, it's basically just to make sure that the contractor is in compliance with unemployment standards, um, workers' compensation, they've paid their taxes, that type of thing. Uh, so that uh, was not in that contract either, that uh, specific verbiage was not. So nothing that I think is too, too uh, major, it's just a matter of getting that in. All the other, the other projects we looked at did have that information, so it was just one that, that um, omitted it. So again, not too big, too uh, uh, much of a significant issue. Getting into the uh, financial analysis part, this is just as, um, a five-year look at your inventory balances. <coughs> You'll see it has been decreasing over the last uh, couple of years, which is a, um, a, a nice thing to see um, just to kind of keep your inventory levels low, and management has been looking a lot at this, and one thing that they've been able to do now is to help keep that low um, is look at local vendors that would be able to get um, specific parts here in a matter of a couple of days rather than having to wait a while so that that will help you keep that inventory level down so that uh, you don't have to keep as much on hand. This here is your operating revenue by source. This includes all of your operating revenue so none of your capital grant activity is included in here. Um, basically you are pretty similar to last year overall uh, revenue operating revenue was down about 118,000 look at a couple of the, uh, the different sources your property tax levy was the same as it was in the prior year state grants and aids were up about 1.1 million uh, that's about 15.2 percent and that's just the result of the state's share of the of, of the fixed drought and dial ride grants increasing um, essentially they covered the federal portion as you'll see here in 2016 there's no orange part of the bar and so the uh, federal grant decreased from 1.3 million last year to zero this year as the state grants um, covered the operating portions of the, of the fixed drought and dial ride right grants this year. Passenger fare revenue was down a little bit this year, about $50,000. So it was still higher than you projected within your budget, um, but with a decrease in overall ridership, that uh, revenue did decrease a little bit. And then other revenue sources in total increased about 146,000, and that was essentially uh, just the um, sale of um, compressed nat natural gas to an outside truck company um, for a few months during the year. So this is your total revenues and expenses uh, from a long-term perspective. So this includes all of the capital grant activity, the capital grant revenue, um, which it, it did not include on the previous slide. So revenues then, when you include the capital grant activity, were, were, was relatively flat from last year. It increased about 0.4% or $64,000. Uh, so we take into effect that decrease in operating grants that I just talked about. And then with your capital grant activity, that actually increased about $182,000. Um, and that is because of an increase in your preventative maintenance grant and then some new state capital grants um, for the purchase of, of, of a dial, of dial ride buses, the maintenance hoist, and then also the beginning um, costs related to the garage addition for dial ride On the expense side, overall an increase of, of about $266,000 from last year, uh, from $13.4 million up to $13,674,000. Uh, this is really an increase in salaries, just annual increases there, an increase in marketing costs, and then also an increase in depreciation expense overall. Um, so with that, we'll look at your overall financial position. This chart is kind of, kind of hard to read, um, but the top chart, uh, the top line, I should say, the orange, is your net position balance. So that's your total net position balance from a long-term perspective. Now this is a number that will change once we get the uh, pension information from PERA. This number will either increase or decrease depending on what uh, the overall uh, pension liability did for the year. 
So my hunch is that it's probably going to decrease a little bit, um, but I don't know for sure yet. So as of right now, based on your activity without the pension, uh, you increased your total net position by $796,000. So from a long-term perspective, if somebody asked if you're better off or worse off, then um, September 30th of 15, you would be better off. You would say you're better off by about $796,000 from a long-term perspective. Now this increase was mainly just because of the, the uh, activity in the general fund itself. From a modified accrual basis, you were up about $1.7 million. So that really drove the overall increase in your uh, total net position. So the net investment in capital assets is the next number down, the gray one at 19,186. This is a decrease of about 959,000. And this is uh, basically uh, your depreciation expense was higher than uh, your capital asset additions and then the payoff of the bond. So the expense side was ended up being higher than new capital asset additions. So that's um, why that uh, number decreased this year. And then the unrestricted cash balance is uh, the third line from the bottom, the, the bluish color. They're at $8,158. So this is, um, this increased about 971,000 from last year, a nice trend over the last few years with their cash balance increasing. And um, that is, again, just the result of the general fund operations um, increasing overall revenues exceeding expenditures by the $1.7 million. This chart here shows, just from a fund balance perspective, internal assignments for your fund balance. So you have uh, money that is set aside for specific things. You've got um, for fixed assets, self-insurance, uh, fixed drought expansion, those types of things. So this is just a chart that gives you a little bit more detail on the assignments that uh, are make up part of your total general fund, fund balance. Capital expenditures, um, this just gives you a little bit of an idea of the capital activity within the organization. Obviously 2014 is the year that sticks out here. Um, that year you had the training center, um, uh, the CNG project, and then also the purchase of 23 CNG buses, so that had a significant impact. Otherwise, the other years, especially the last two, right around that $420,000, $460,000 mark, nothing real significant as far as projects going on or no uh, significant bus purchases either. I did keep these, these next two on separate slides this year because it got kind of small to see when I tried to put them next to each other to compare them. But uh, this chart shows the 2016 operating revenues by source. The next one is operating uh, the 2015 operating revenues by source. Um, so really what I want to look at is if there were any changes as far as the where your revenue is coming from from last year to this year. Um, state grants did increase um, to 62.7%. Um, and then federal grants you won't see on this one at all because the, as I mentioned earlier, your federal grant um, ended up the operating portion was covered by state uh, um, funds this year. And so state grants last year was 54%, uh, federal grants was 9.8%. This year that's all in state grants at 62.7%. So you are really reliant on uh, the state, uh, state funding and state grants to be able to operate. Um, when it's almost 63% of your total um, total revenue sources. Otherwise, uh, property taxes is rough, roughly the same as it was last year, 18.7% of your total revenue compared to 18.5% last year. And other the other um, sources were also pretty much the same as they were in 2015. I've got the same type of thing for your operating expenses by department here. Uh, really, there aren't any, any significant changes for the most part. Your expenses were spent in the same departments, the same programs as they were in 2015. Uh, the largest area was the fixed route, the actual operations on the fixed route and dial a ride. That was 61.4% this year, um, which is up a little bit from 60.5% last year. Otherwise, as I mentioned, um, each of the other um, programs um, basically had the same percentage allocation from, from 2015. That is all that I have uh, prepared for you. If you have any questions, I can certainly try to answer them for you. Questions from commissioners? Mm -hmm.
Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. much.